Hi, it's Chester at Blue Peacan Computer Training, and in this video, we're going to look at how to create macro buttons. So the macro that I've created just takes us to a particular sheet in our workbook. If I click on either of these buttons, I end up on the summary sheet. Each of these sheets for each quarter has those buttons, apart from quarter four, which is what we need to complete. We're going to look at two ways of making buttons, one with shapes, and one with a form control. Okay, let's see how we can do this. I'm on the quarter four sheet where we don't currently have our buttons. And the first thing you'll need to do to create the buttons and to work with macros is show the developer tab on your ribbon, which you can see that I've got visible up here. It doesn't appear by default. So to get it to appear, right click on one of the other tabs, go to customize the ribbon, and then on the right side here, you'll see a list of tabs and you need to make sure that the developer tab is ticked. Click on OK, and then you will see your developer tab. Now we're going to record a macro that takes us to the summary sheet. You may already have a macro that you wish to assign to a button. So to create this macro, what I'm going to do is go to the record macro button and I'm going to give the macro a name. Now a macro name cannot have spaces. I'm just going to call this go to summary sheet. I'm going to store the macro in this workbook and then I'm going to click on OK. Then all I need to do is just click on the sheet that I want our button to take us to. So that's the summary sheet and then I can stop recording. So the first thing we're going to do is create a button using the form controls in Excel. I'm going to go back to my quarter four sheet where I want to create the button. And on the developer tab, I'm going to go to the insert menu and under form controls, I'm going to click on the button button. I click on that and then I draw a button on this sheet. I'm holding down my left mouse button. And I just drag out to the size and the shape that I want for the button. Let go. And then it'll ask me to assign a macro to the button. So I'm going to assign go to summary sheet. Click on OK. And then I can overtype this default text within the button. If I need to resize the button, I can do so by just dragging these little handles on the edge. If I click outside the button, it gets rid of those little handles. And now the button is ready to go. I can tell it's ready to go. If I place my mouse pointer over it, I get a little hand as a mouse pointer. I click on it, it takes me to the summary sheet. If I want to edit this text or resize the button, I right click on the button and then I can resize it. And I can also edit the text. Okay, so that's how you create a button using a form control. Another type of button you can create uses just basic shapes within Excel. So if I go to the insert tab on my ribbon, I've got a shapes menu here. I can click on that. And I can use any of these shapes to create a button. So I'm going to use this rectangle shape with rounded corners. And all I do is I drag out for the shape and size of the button I want to create. Again, holding down my left mouse button. Let go. Then I can type into the shape. I can align the text within the shape. If I go to the Home tab, I can use these normal alignment buttons. And then to assign a macro to this shape, all I do is right click on it, go to Assign Macro, and then choose the macro I want to assign to the button. Click on OK, click outside the button, click on the button, I get the little hand again, and it takes me to the summary sheet. Because we now have a macro within our workbook, we will need to save the workbook as a macro enabled workbook. And that gives you a file extension of XLSM. I'll just show you quickly how you know whether you've saved a file as a macro enabled workbook. You go to file, save as, there's the file type there, XLSM. By default, your file will be saved as an Excel workbook with the extension XLSX. Because we've got a macro, we need to save it as macro enabled. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully you found it useful. 
If you have, please subscribe and I'll see you next video.